Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. Now we've spoken about neurons. These are the excitable cells of the nervous system. They're the cells that send the electrical signals. Now we need to talk about the other cell types of the nervous system that we term glia. They're actually the most abundant type of cells in the nervous system. They tend to outnumber neurons three to one. Now glia is Greek for glue which they originally thought meant they held the nervous system together. But in actual fact, they simply support the neurons. They're the best friends of the neurons. They make sure they're okay. They check to see if they need anything. And if they do, they provide them with the nutrients and support that's required. Now, when we break the nervous system up into the central nervous system, brain and spinal cord, there's four different types of glia that you should know. So the first type are those called astrocytes. Now, remember the suffix site means cell, astro means star. These types of glia look like stars. Now, they play multiple roles within the nervous system. They're an extremely important type of glia. They play a role in the blood-brain barrier. So the blood-brain barrier separates out what's floating around in the bloodstream to what gets to the brain. Very important because sometimes there's certain toxins or drugs that shouldn't get from the bloodstream to the brain and astrocytes help maintain this barrier. They also play a role in supplying appropriate, appropriate nutrients like glucose, for example, to certain neurons, maintains ionic stability. So if we need more sodium or potassium or chloride or magnesium, whatever it may be, they help maintain that environment. And they also play an important role in repairing neurons if they're damaged. Astrocytes actually have demonstrated to be able to be like stem cells and produce multiple different types of cells within the nervous system. Then let's move on to the oligodendrocytes. Now, an important role for the oligodendrocytes is this. Oligodendrocytes have these big long extensions or arms and the fingers of these arms tend to wrap around the axons of neurons forming this fatty layer that we call a myelin sheath. In actual fact, the myelin sheath is around about 80% fat, 20% protein. And what this myelin sheath does, it's like the rubber insulation of electrical wires. It allows for an appropriate electrical signal to be sent. Without a myelin sheath, the electrical signal can dissipate and it means it can become weakened and electrical signal may not be sent. Now, oligodendrocytes are in the central nervous system. So they're the rubber wrapping or the fatty layer that wraps around axons in the brain and spinal cord. And when somebody has multiple sclerosis, this is a degeneration of these myelin sheaths of the oligodendrocytes. So that means people with MS, the electrical sig signals can dissipate. They're not very strong, they don't get sent very well, and therefore multiple downstream effects can occur. Another type of glia in the central nervous system are the ependymal cells. Now, these cells line the roofs of our ventricles. Now remember the ventricles are these hollowed parts of our brain, and the ventricles are there to produce cerebral spinal fluid. Remember, our brain and spinal cord floats in a sea of cerebral spinal fluid, helps wash away any toxic metabolites that have been built up over an extended period of time and deliver nutrients as well. And it also provides a shock absorption for our brain and spinal cord. The cerebral spinal fluid is produced by the ependymal cells that are lining our ventricles. Microglia, micro meaning small, they're the small supporting cells of the central nervous system. They're like macrophages, big eaters, but these, in this case they're small and they actually scavenge. So any um, cells that have been broken down or degenerated or anything that shouldn't be there, they play a role in scavenging and recycling those products. All right, the one type of cell, glial cell, that I want you to know for the peripheral nervous system is that of the Schwann cells. So the Schwann cells, firstly, feels good to say, sounds good, Schwann cells are the oligodendrocyte equivalent within the peripheral nervous system. So they form the myelin sheath. But the difference is this, an oligodendrocyte, a single oligodendrocyte can actually create layers or myelin sheaths around multiple neurons. Only one Schwann cell can wrap a single neuron. So you can see here, one Schwann cell has wrapped only a single axon, okay? But again, the myelin sheath is there as an insulation allows for an appropriate electrical signal to be sent. So these are the types of glia you'll find in the central and peripheral nervous system.